former Kansas City Chiefs star will be joining us in studio. How are you today, Joy? I'm great. Good morning. Good morning, good morning, good morning. So I am, um, I, I read a headline today. Headline today said, Tom Brady has fewer postseason road wins than Mark Sanchez. Whew. That is amazeballs. Of course, Tom Brady never plays on the road in the playoffs. That is pretty much the entire story. I hear this a lot, and I understand. Fan is short for fanatic. People go to games, pay money, love their team, love their city. But I hear this a lot. Well, I mean, New England has feasted on a lame division. That's a real break. You are absolutely right. You are absolutely right. But do you realize every current dynasty got a huge break or they would not be a dynasty? Think about Nick Saban. This is a 10-year dynasty. Tennessee football, top 12 program, been a disaster. LSU can't get an elite coach. Either can rival Auburn. Until recently, Georgia was a mess. And Florida just now got the right coach. If Nick Saban was facing an elite coach at any one of those schools annually for the last 10 years, they're not getting out of the SEC. They're probably still winning 10 and 11 games, but Florida's been a dumpster fire. Tennessee's been a dumpster fire. LSU, Auburn can't get a world-class coach. Georgia just got one finally after eight years of Nick kicking their butt. That's not to say that Alabama wouldn't be great. You wouldn't have this dynasty. Let's talk about the Golden State dynasty. They got a huge break. Steph Curry got hurt very early in his career. And he signed a skimpy contract. Tiny contract. A good player contract. He instantly, next year, becomes MVP. The contract allows them to fortify their bench, keep Draymond and Clay and add Kevin Durant. You do realize pre-Durant, they lost in the finals. You do not have that dynasty without Steph Curry's injury. The Troy Aikman, Jimmy Johnson, Cowboy dynasty. Oh, they'd have won games. They'd have been good. But the New York Giants and Bill Parcells, they were good in that division, better than Dallas. Bill Parcells left. Ray Handley took over. They became one of the worst coach teams in the league. And Joe Gibbs was making Washington a power in the NFL. He retired. They hired Richie Pettibone to Norv Turner. They've since never recovered. If Bill Parcells and Joe Gibbs are going toe-to-toe with Jimmy for years, he's not getting out of that division every year. And if he is, he's beat up. He doesn't have home field. He's losing too many games in division. Look at the Spurs dynasty. There was a big break. Shaq and Kobe... Phil Jackson, you had the two best closers in the league, the best coach, and at the time, the Lakers were the number one free agency brand. Tim Duncan and the Spurs do not ever have a dynasty. First three years, they're winning titles. They get along. Del Harris years, they get along. Then they get a divorce. And then the Spurs dynasty starts with Tim Duncan. When Kobe and Shaq had won three straight, Kobe still had six prime years left. Shaq about four. Those are just the prime years. They still had the best coach. They were the number one brand in the NBA for free agents. Saban, Cowboys, Spurs. Those dynasties got huge breaks. Or they're just really, really good teams that win a championship like the Seattle Seahawks. Yes, The Patriots have feasted on the Bills, Jets, and the Miami Dolphins' dysfunction. And every, every dynasty needs a big break or two. Michael Jordans didn't start until the Pistons got old. Until Larry Bird's leg fell apart. They weren't beating those teams before. I wouldn't consider that a break, but it should be noted. Michael Jordan's legacy and dynasty elevated... When the Pistons and Celtics simply got old. Couldn't beat them before that. Now, I don't classify that as a break like the Spurs got with a Shaq-Kobe divorce. Saban with the dysfunction in the SEC. Or Steph Curry rolling his ankle, allowing them to build this monster roster. But before you put too much 
into the Patriots dynasty just curling up and dying, they would be hosting Kansas City this weekend because they had the tiebreaker, beat them early in the year. They would be hosting Kansas City and be beating Kansas City this weekend if not for an incredibly bad break. Gronk on the field on a Hail Mary, and a Gronk, of course, is the NFL's worst safety. If not for that implausible, inexplicable finish, the Patriots would be hosting the AFC Championship and favored over Patrick Mahomes and the Chiefs. All right, let's shift gears to this. There are four teams left. New England, Kansas City, Ram Saints. If you are an NFL player, and unless you're in these games, the other 28 teams, there is one team you have to root for. You have to root for the Rams if you're a player. Um, New England has been bad for players. New England rolls their eyes at stars. New England doesn't pay anybody. Even Tom Brady is not a top 8 to 10 paid quarterback. New England is winning with depth, underpaying virtually everybody. They're winning with a system. That's not good for players. For years and years, journalists didn't make anything. You had the CBS News division. CNN covers the world. And then Rupert Murdoch created Fox about outspoken individual political commentators. And they beat CNN. And now people like Rachel Maddow can make over $10 million a year. You should send Rupert Murdoch a thank you. He changed the paradigm. It was no longer about having the beefiest news division. It was about having people with strong opinions, left or right, that people became huge fans of, and it made a lot of people rich. But the Rams are different. Something happened last year in the NFL. Philadelphia decided, we're going to go big on free agency. And they beat the system New England. And what happened? Jay Glazer discusses what happened after Philly won, splurging big in free agency. Last couple of years, free agency's been a bad game of fantasy football. Guys whose names are big, who are getting overpaid, and you just don't win that way. You don't build, and a lot of teams realize that. They're like, we're not doing this. We're not going and throwing a boatload of money than Dominic and Sues and all those guys. It's not a huge type of market because it just doesn't work that way. It's, you gotta build through the draft, and you gotta, you gotta smartly go get an Andrew Whitworth. But then all of a sudden, the Philadelphia Eagles happened last year. And the Eagles went out, and they got guys like Alshon Jeffrey and the Chris Longs, and then they traded for J.H.I. They almost played this game that has become taboo in free agents, and all of a sudden, Philly had success with it, and that's why I think you see all these teams this year, they have changed their ways. They're like, oh, because it's a whatever you've done for me lately league. Absolutely. So Philadelphia last year went big into free agency and beat the system. The Rams this year went big into free agency. And in this copycat league, if they beat New Orleans, get to the Super Bowl and win it, great for players. Amari Cooper going to Dallas, winning the division, great for stars. Khalil Mack going to Chicago, winning a division, great for star defensive players. This is a copycat league. If you're a player, you are rooting for the Rams. You want to not only sign with a team for four years, but then if you outperform your team, go on the free agent market and the best teams come after you. That's leverage. That drives your price up. NBA's always been about free agency. We, my, I've been following the NBA for 40 years. It's always about collecting stars. The NFL, New England's been the opposite of that. New England has said stars, the silly teams, the teams that aren't prudent, aren't responsible, Miami, Buffalo, Houston, the silly teams go after free agency. Rams win this weekend off the Eagles championship last year. March and April NFL free agency will be absolutely huge. You should root for your own economy. That's not saying as a player in any sport, you don't want to win championships. You have families, you have legacies, you got bank accounts. T 
teams will move off you. Be ready to move off them. Players this weekend, root for the Rams. All right, coming up next, you know I am a huge fan of Andy Reid, coach of the Chiefs. And you know I believe he's a Hall of Fame coach. And you know I believe he's the last great coach in the NFL currently without a Super Bowl. But there are two or three people in sports. No more excuses. That coming up next. The holidays now are officially behind us. 